We're at Amoeba in Hollywood. Jordy White, also known as Twiggy, who's in Marilyn Manson, A Perfect Circle, and uh, Goon Moon. Occasionally Nine Inch Nails. Occasionally Nine Inch Nails. What do you got in your bag? Um, for starters, we have a uh, Who Quadrophenia. Can make it rain the way the I embarrassingly just recently got into this record because The Who was always my mom's music. But um, I recently got turned on to this particular record and I uh, really love it and the movie as well. Um, yeah, there That's you have it. You like that one too, right? I love that record. Stars of a Lid. This isn't actually one of my favorite other records, but I do love this one, and it's really good to fall asleep to. It's definitely pointless to get this to fall asleep to because you have to keep on to get up to change the. You've got to flip it over, and that's the triple A LP. So that'd be six times, I guess. Is that right? Yeah. It's so a lot of work. On. That's a lot of work. So up next is Venom. Welcome to hell. Let's look at the back. That just says it all why you would want to get that. The bulldozer bass and vocals. Mantis with the chainsaw guitar dives, and Abaddon, drums and nuclear warheads. <laughs> you can't go wrong with Welcome to Hell. Soundtrack to Fantastic Planet. Right? Yeah. But La Planete, whatever that is. Um, I don't remember what the soundtrack sounds like, but I love the movie. It's very relaxing to watch, too, so I imagine that the music's probably really strange, too. It smells of bones. What vermin? The great council should de the park more often. Owning a domestic arm is all right, they're amusing. But all these savage ohms, they steal, they're dirty, and they reproduce at an appalling rate. Let's stamp them out. Wasp. Animal, F-U-C-K, like a beast. We used to joke around that um, this kind of had an influence on uh, us, me, myself, and Marilyn Manson, just because the because they look kind of silly and they're kind of horror rock. I mean, if you get a look at them, that. Um, and we all used to make fun of um, we used to make fun of uh, Nine Inch Nails, saying that that's where they got the idea for "I Fuck You Like an Animal" was for "Animal Fuck Like a Beast," which. And Chris Holmes on guitar, if you ever saw um, Decline of the Western Civilization Part 2, there's a great scenes of him in a, um, in a swimming pool with his, and his mother's on the side and they're filming him and he's just going through about two, three bottles of vodka at a time, like in one sip, and it's just really disturbing and sad and funny. Do you think that maybe um, this kind of, you know, rock and roll lifestyle is, is hard on you and maybe that's why you drink? Well, I'm a full-blown alcoholic. And uh, oh, I drink is because, look, what? What? So, why do you drink, Chris? Ah, uh, because it makes me happy. Happy. Hearing um, which was Ronnie James Dio's version of, um, of USA for Africa. Exactly. It's awful, but it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Picture the cover, all the people involved in this thing. It was like everyone from Quiet Riot to Judas Priest to Motley Crue to Spinal Tap. They basically, uh, each they, each a few singers would sing a line like they do in Live Aid. You're missing out. Look at this. And they can get hearing aid merchandise too. Well, that's Jimmy Bain from uh, Dio and Rudy Sarzo, who was also played for Ozzy but wasn't quite right at the time. Sporting hearing aid t-shirts. Yeah. I want one. We should fill this out and send it in and just see what happens. Oasis don't believe the truth. Where to begin, one of my favorite bands of all time. Um, I get, uh, people get really angry with me when I say I like them better than the Beatles, but I do. But I love the Beatles. Um, I actually have a... I don't know 
Okay. Nerd geek I am, I don't believe the truth tattoo. <laughs> Queensryche, Rage for Water. Not too embarrassed to say that I really think this record's amazing. Um, I actually turned this record on to a lot of people who would never ever listen to heavy metal much or Queensryche. And I'll say it's pretty much ahead of its time. It's very, it came out, I think, in 86. And it sounds like something that came out in 1990. It's, there's a lot of like... Um, it's pre-Operation Minecrime. Right? It's pre-Operation Minecrime. And it actually sounds like, like the Pesh Mode or Nine Inch Nails. And they're all dressed up like weird vampires on the back. I mean, you get a... You see their outfits. Yeah, because I can't find any of these pictures online. Striper. Again, I actually really like this band. Um, there was actually at one point, I'm not sure how much I should talk about it, but I actually got a, uh, they actually sued me personally. What? Yeah. They yeah. did? They sued me personally and um, it was just for, uh, I just said some things about them on TV that I shouldn't have said that were untrue, that I made up and fabricated just to be funny. And um, apparently they took it seriously and word got around and I actually have the papers at home. Eventually just got settled with an apology, but it was, it was pretty cool to actually get sued by Striper. Never but you actually that. liked them though, right? No, but actually, yeah, I've, I've, actually, I've actually caught a Striper Bible. I mean, that was kind of your early teens and stuff. Yeah, I metal. was actually, um, for career day in high school, I came dressed up as a bass player of this band. Like, um, I looked like an idiot. You, know, you gotta yellow, get a photo. Yellow, I have it, yeah. Really? I have it. Yellow spandex. And actually, it was for, I'm gonna drop names here for a minute. I had, was, I made a Thanksgiving dinner at my house and I had this picture of me blown up and on my wall as Tim Gaines. And uh, Rivers Como of Weezer came over. I cooked turkey for him and some other guests. And he saw that picture and he's like, I looked exactly like that when I was in. All right, that's what's in my bag. That's all I got, please. That's good stuff, Charlie. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Thanks, Fred. I'm really proud. Bye.